throughout the length of the trade where your where your profit region and where your your pain region is. As you worked out yesterday, a break even uh, for an option trade is the spot price at expiration for which the trade will neither lose or make money. Um, and then in general, uh, so for, to, I'm going to denote those with B's today, right? The the break even at time B at time T will be B sub T. Um, so generally for short option positions, you're going to find that by going past the short strike by the premium, right? Just take K and then depending on what's a put or call, add or subtract the credit. Um, but right, like we were saying, if you're an active trader, you don't really care about B of tau as much as you do at BT for the T's in between zero and tau, um, right? So we're going to say B of T is the collection of spot prices because there's probably going to, for a lot of strategies, there'll be an upside one and a downside one. Um, the collection of spot prices such that the option value at time T, if that's the spot price at time T, is the same as the option price at the beginning, right? Time zero with the initial spot price. Um, there's a couple of caveats that I'm doing today to simplify things. One, we're, we're working strictly in black shoals. Um, we're not going to worry about volatility changing in a, in a certain sense. This is the uh, it, it's uh, ceteris paribus, you know, all else being equal calculations. Um, we're not going to handle dynamic volatility. You could probably juice this up a bit, but um, we wanted to. I wanted it to be sort of comprehensible on some level. And the other thing is that I'm going to work in prices rather than log returns, even though Black Scholes model says that it's log returns that are normally distributed or modeled by by Brownian motions, and I'm going to use it as if the prices were. Um, I'll say this is a forgivable simplification because if you have a 45 uh, DTE trade, and you know tau is measured in years. If you're substituting log for x minus one, log x for x minus one, the error on that is of the order x squared, and 45 over 365 squared is like 0 0.015. So you're like 1.5 percent off, which is probably less than a, a, a strike um, difference. So we're, we're not going to worry about it too much, but it should be. You know, I, I like to be very thorough, and I'll point out that this is a, a simplification assumption reality everything i'm working in should be there should be a lot more logs running around because we should take logs of the closing break even pr prices and then work through the parabolas well go we'll go to the next slide and we'll, we'll see the parabolas really exist in log return space not in price space but we're gonna pretend that that's not a difference mm. um so the simplest case would be just a single naked short call Right. And on the right, I have in its full horrific glory, the Black Scholes uh, formula for the value for the fair option value of a short call of a call. Um, right. And it's got the phi being the normal cumulative density function. You've got your spot price, your risk free rate, your volatility. Uh, T minus capital T minus little t is the same as tau is the time until expiration. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's a big mess. Um, and so you could put you could take this formula and if you were being really precise go back into the definition from the last slide of what i was defining bft at and work out um these things probably you want to use a computer to get good approximations and it, it would it would be be functional um but if we instead think about how the black Scholes model works and and ignore the difference between log price log returns and, and price changes uh <laughs> we can get a much more clear picture going on which is that because of Brownian scaling, all of the arcs of, of constant value are these parabolas, are these parabolic arcs, right? This, this lower left-hand picture, right? Y squared equals X uh, kind of shapes. Uh, and then we have two points that we know, because we know that the break-even and expiration, that was easy to calculate. That's just the strike plus the credit. And the break-even right at the start is also super easy to calculate because it's the spot price, right? Of course, if you take the trade off instantly, it breaks even and the spot didn't move. Um, and so we've just got those two points and I'm going to connect them by a parabolic arc. There's only one way to do that. Uh, B sub T is S is the spot price plus the square root of how long you've been in the trade, right? T over T, um, right? How, how much of the trade has elapsed times K plus C minus S0. And if you wanted to regroup the S zeros together and, and have the K plus C, on the on the outside, you could. I don't think that that's more clear or less clear. Um, but so there, there it is. There's the full formula for for the break-even prices throughout the throughout the length of the uh, call. Um, of course, we don't only sell calls. We do more complicated strategies. We do two-sided trades. We do uh, defined risk trades. Sometimes we do ratio trades. Um, so let's go one more slide, and we'll we'll work out. It's not it, this laid the groundwork for everything that we needed, though. Um, Little needs to be adjusted to generalize this to other strategies. 
Um, the, the two calculations that stand are that the break-even price right at the start is the spot price, um, and that the break-even prices at expiration are those simple credit past, the, past your short strikes, um, right? Minus if it's a put, plus if it's a call. Um, and that the parabolic arcs are still going to be connecting them. So the only complication to this, right, it's the same parabol parabola, just now there's one going down as well if you have like a strangle going on, so you have a, a downside one. If you're... Because if your trade is a little unbalanced, right, if, you're, if your call is closer in and your put's further out so that the, the break-evens aren't symmetric around the spot price, then the two parabolic arcs won't have the same curvature. You just do them separately, though. Do the upside one and the downside one separately, and they'll both be accurate. Um, and so to be sort of specific and useful rather than looking at the full arc, right, a lot of the time we say to close trades at 21 DTE. Um, well, 21 DTE is... We, as I said, you take square root of how far into the trade you are. So if you're 21 DTE, that means you're 24 days into the trade. Square root of 24 over 45 is 73% uh, with a tiny bit of error. And so if you look at your, so if that's your, your intended management and you, you know, the platform shows you your break-evens at expiration, well, your break-evens at 21 DTE are just 73% of that distance from the spot. So if you're, your break-evens before were plus and minus 20 bucks from the spot, at uh, 21 DTE, it's going to be like 1460. Um, and then that'll, that'll let you sort of get a, a more solid idea about what the range of good prices, right? When you place a strangle, you're more or less betting that the prices are going to stay within a certain parabola or, you know, one parabolic arc up and one parabolic arc, arc down. And this lets you see how far out that parabola is. And so you you can really get an idea of like what the bet is that you're placing when you sell a when you sell a short strangle or a short iron condor or anything like that by just scaling in your your break evens at close by the square root of how much of the trade has elapsed. And that's perfect. How are you doing, Tom? Very nice. Got your emails? It's a little tough for me. Tony did a great job today of being the active student who smiles and nods and looks like he's getting it. I that, how do you think I got through high school? That's, you know, it, I it, sat it, in it, front of the class and I did this. Parabolic <laughs> parabolic arcs are very tough for me. I have to be honest. That's with a you. pro tip right there, by the way. Break evens and expiration are not of much interest to an active, active option trader, but finding your break even prices throughout a trade can seem daunting. But if you make a little bit of a simplifying assumption, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just connect it. For, you connect the the opening spot price to the break even and expiration by a parabola. A parabolic arc is just me because the parabola to the upside and to the downside might be different parabolas, so they're each a parabolic arc, but really it's just parabolas. Um, if you intend to close, and to, to make it really specific, if you're intending to close a 45 DT trade at 21 DT, that is this that is essentially a bet that this, the underlying will stay within 73% of its expiration break evens, and so you can always sort of scale in your that right. You're, you're letting it run for slightly more than half, but the square root factor turns slightly more than half into 73% which is perhaps one of the advantages of being a, 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 an early managing option trader is that you let it run for half the time, but you get almost three quarters of the, the play. How do you, how you like that, Sadnoff? Um, I like the, go back to that last slide, John, just for one second. I like that, that, um, I like that 73% number, but that's, mm -hmm. but, in reality, our number seems to come out a little higher than that. You're thinking of the 80% winners, right? Yeah, yeah, I said in reality, yeah. So that, that's that's 80%. That, that's showing that 80, 80, 80 some percent of the time, prices oh, stay oh, within you're just, 70 you're just talking. you're just talking break-evens. Yeah, I'm talking about the distance, right? That's not yeah. the rate of success. That's right, the right, distance right. out of the money. Yeah, so... That's probably yeah. We don't. I don't think about it that way, but yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, if Tom says it makes sense, then it makes sense to me too. And you know what makes sense right now? We're gonna have to take a quick ninety-second break. Sad enough, even the S and P down twenty, uh, up twenty-eight, as foretold. We're gonna take a quick ninety-second break. You want to? Yeah. Sure, um, you do. We'll take a quick ninety-second break. We'll come back. We got more safety live after this. You want to say something? No, I, I wanted to say because I didn't. We, the one thing I think that that none of us ever think about is we always talk about what is the probability of of expiring there or touching there, but we never put a number on the break even 
when you go to the expected move on the break even. So what that is, we, we but we do talk about what are the statistical chances of success. So what's interesting about that, now that I just like thought about it, put it all together, is that 73% number is kind of a number that we should probably use that we don't. Yeah, right. it's the other way of looking at it, right? You can look at the probability of profit, or you can look at the distance out of the money, and yeah. the, the the you know you can Black Scholes model between the two. Yeah, and whichever one is more comfortable. I think one of the best things about math is that it, since it's all true in every direction, whichever way makes sense to you, you can think about it that way, and then get to everything else from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Good. Good job, Jacob. I mean, great job. See that? We found a useful use for you. We're going to take a quick 90 second break and come back. We got more safety live after this. What comes up next, Sadnoff? You got your boy. That's right. Your friend and mine, Mr. Mr. Scott Sheridan from the Scott Sheridan Studios in Burbank, California. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Take you live. I'm Sadnoff disavowing Scott Sheridan. You're your boy, he says. Sheridan. <laughs>